the future. Earth groans under tyranny and dictatorship. One man will lead a revolt that will be remembered for many years to come. One man who will turn the tables on the corrupt Federation. One man who will fight to the last drop of their blood. His name, Blake. One man thinks he can win. He is fighting against injustice and a corrupt empire. He is trying to destroy the Federation. His name is Blake. I think Blake 7 became very popular because, again, it was very black and white in its, in its morals, its attitudes. Um, it, it was goody versus baddie in simplistic terms. Uh, I also then think on top of that, we did actually have some very good actors in it, not just the seven, but some of the guest actors. And I think they put levels onto it, um, which weren't even necessarily there in the writing. Veer Lorimer, one of our directors, he said, oh, it's cowboys in space, which, um, sort of space opera as opposed to soap opera. One of the interesting things about Blake 7 was that with uh, the whole series by definition of being science fiction, being to, to a certain extent fantasy and detached from reality, what we tried to do was to put into it seven very real people with feelings and emotions which uh, people could identify with. With our speed we'll probably outrun them this time, but they'll keep coming, pushing us, tracking us, they'll never give up. Nor will we. When we can handle this ship properly, we'll stop running. Then we'll fight. Blake's attitude to Servalan was that as the head of the arch enemy, uh, she was the one driving force that had to be destroyed. Servalan occupied a position of power, great power, at a time when women weren't doing that nearly as much. And I think that was part of her fascination. She had a, a woman's skills combined with a man's skills. I think that's what made her so interesting. The interesting thing for me when Terry Nation was writing the script he told me that originally Servalan was a man and he was halfway through the first episode when he suddenly thought, no, she's, he's a she. So halfway through writing, she became a woman. Blake is alive and if not well, at least on the road to recovery. More important, he is my prisoner. Naturally, I wouldn't expect you to take my word for it. So you may see him and talk to him. I already have. What? Servalan was more intelligent than a lot of them put together. She's the only one that didn't get blown up. On screen, yes, there were conflicts, obviously, between Blake and Avon. Um, it's interesting that the Federation as such, particularly in the, uh, with the, um, the head of the Federation, Servalan, she at one point recognised Avon almost as an equal. And I think Avon almost recognised her as an equal. The one person she could never beat was Blake. Did I think Blake was boring? Um, I thought he was much more copable with than Avon. He didn't have the element of danger for me that um, Avon did. But I don't think he was intended to. Callie lacked, I think at times, a certain sense of humour. Oh, I won't, actually, I, I will qualify that. She had an extremely subtle sense of humour, which could possibly be lost on some viewers. It's a long way out, Blake. A long way from the edge of the galaxy. It's infinity. You're asking us to plunge out into infinity. Now, come on, Kelly, that's a slight exaggeration. Is it? What, the space between the island galaxies? It's the nearest we'll come to infinity before we die. Avon felt he was a danger to Blake. Blake didn't feel Avon was a danger to him. Blake was the only one that knew how to handle Avon, and the way to handle Avon was railroad him, threaten him, make him frightened. He could be very, very, very clever with all his witchery and Jiggery, jiggery pokery and all this sort of thing, with computers and goodness knows what else. But Avon never actually had the guts to lead. And that's an area which Blake knew very well and again exploited. The one 
that I always feel it was very sad they wrote out so quickly was Gan um, with the limiter in his head. It was embedded into Gan's skull, which took quite a lot of time in makeup, sticking this little piece of transistor to my head with glue and tape. And um, I've still got it somewhere. It was presented to me. <laughs> Good. That's much better. Yes, there it is. There's the limiter implant. You can see it quite clearly. Is there a fault? I'm not sure. That section seems to be burned out. That could cause a conductivity loss. Would that account for what's happening to him? It's not my field, but if I'm right, then the limiter is feeding scrambled impulses into his brain. Can it be corrected? You've got to get into this first. I firmly believe that uh, when you've got a, a group of people working together and uh, they're enjoying what they're doing, um, given that the scripts are reasonable and the idea is a good one, then I think that, that uh, I like to believe uh, that that comes through to the audience. And we did enjoy doing it very much indeed. We had a lot of laughs. I don't know what people will think when they see it for the first time on UK Gold. I hope that they will really enjoy it. Mm -hmm.